Hello everyone. Now what we've got here is the front motor out of the plaid. This is also called the Raven motor. It's basically the Model 3 rear drive unit that's been uh, repackaged um, to serve as the front. So its layout's a bit different, but the internals are largely the same. With the exception of, on the plaid, we have this carbon overwrap on the rotor right there. To get this view, I had to go through a lot of trouble. Um, the magnets on the uh, rotor are very strong. So, like, see, it, it's pulling that like an inch away. I don't want to hit it and damage the rotor, but it's really strong. So what happens is when you try to remove the field up here, um, it sticks. So what I had to do is uh, make a basically a press here that presses this tube down on the rotor and keeps it centered and then I use the forklift to lift up the field exposing the rotor. Now if I wanted to take the field off I'd have to unbolt this and do a dance here um, and it would just be difficult to put back on so I didn't see any reason to because I, I really don't want to wreck this motor it's otherwise good um, but a lot of people wanted to see what's inside and you know we have the rotor looks just like a model 3 rotor except it's black with this the carbon fiber all over it these are the field coils this is uh likely kevlar string or some other aramid high temperature string that's used to uh, bind all the windings together and keep them from vibrating uh, if they vibrate um, the insulation could be degraded on them and then uh, you'd have a short um, the three phases terminate in these three uh, crimp connectors that go through to the inverter side of the housing. On the back there's an encoder. You can't see the rotating part of the encoder because it's hidden by that tube. But here's the actual encoder part of the encoder. Um, one curious thing, uh, in earlier revisions of the Model 3 motor, they had a field temperature sensor. It would uh, stick right through this hole and press up against the motor windings so that they could uh, directly measure the motor temperature or the you know motor winding temperature. Um, in later motors they seem to have uh, removed this so my guess is they've gotten a really good model of uh, mo motor temperature internally in software and they don't actually have to sense it. So uh, yeah, cost savings. <coughs> this is like a sine cosine resolver it's, it's basically like a little AC motor. Um, this little tang here engages a bearing in the uh, back of the motor for grounding purposes. And of course, uh, all the same things you'd find on a Model 3 motor. We've got our um, oil to glycol heat exchanger, the oil pump, uh, the oil filter. This is the where the output shaft would normally go. So inside there you can see the differential or part of the differential. And of course, uh, the oil is all pulled in the bottom of this. I didn't, I didn't drain this because this oil is, it's called ATF-9. It's a very, very special fluid that uh, Tesla uses. Very difficult to get to. If anyone knows where to buy it in small quantities, um, let me know in the comments because I haven't been able to find it. So I try to avoid draining these things wherever possible or contaminating them. Um, yeah, and of course underneath here is the other output shaft. I took the inverter off so it wouldn't be damaged. And I've got some uh, screws in the casting there to protect the ceiling surface where the inverter goes. But yeah, all I've got to do now is lower the forklift and this will come back down uh, without scraping up the rotor. And then uh, I can reseal it. So basically what's going on here with my extraction rig, and in hindsight I would have made this a little taller, I've got a tube here that's the exact diameter of the bearing that's on the you know tail end of the rotor shaft. It's being held down by this 2x4, um, which is clamped to the bottom housing with these rods, two rods. The other rods are just to guide this thing so that it uh, comes up straight. 
But yeah, that this is basically clamping the rotor to the housing here, keeping it down. So when this is lifted up and the magnetic field is strong enough to pick this whole 200 pound thing up in the air. Um, and then I have to manually press down on the two by four to get it to come back down. That's how strong those magnets are. So you have no hope of getting this apart without a complicated setup like this. Uh, it took me about two hours to concoct that. Luckily, I had everything here to do it. I probably wouldn't have taken it this far. But yeah, first view of the uh, carbon rotor in the wild. Let's see, maybe come and see up there. So yeah, there's a, a stack of wave washers there for preloading that bearing. And then my tube is just sitting on top of that. And the encoder is under the tube, the actual magnet that forms the rotor of the encoder. The encoder tells the motor or the inverter its position to a fine degree. And that's really needed in a variable traction application. It's, it would be really difficult to, uh, to run an encoderless or sensorless motor in this application. Down in the housing, there's three black plastic tubes um, that have seals. There's O-rings on here where these pass through to seal this uh, cavity so that uh, oil won't go in the inverter side. And uh, there's galleries. There's a uh, windage ring here. It's got holes in it that allows uh, oil to like be forced, you know, it like sprays onto the motor windings directly. Um, also, let's see if we can get that back in. On the field, see, see those little holes, the little U-shaped channels? Oil also circulates through there, cooling the whole stator. And I think uh, yeah, the shaft that uh, is there is hollow, and they circulate oil through that too. So uh, yeah, everything's immersed in oil, and uh, this is super slippery stuff, very low drag uh, to lubricate the gearbox, and its secondary function is cooling. Um, this is where um, once the oil pump uh, pumps, I'm, yeah, I'm pretty sure this is... Now that might be, that's the return gallery right here. So that's where it goes back to the sump. And this is the pressure gallery. That feeds oil to the back of the rotor where that hollow uh, shaft is. And I guess that's that. If you have any questions, leave them below. I'm gonna have more plaid teardown goodness coming soon. So if you like this, um, go ahead and like it. And yeah, I'd appreciate the subscription so I can keep uh, doing more reveals like this. Take care, everyone.